with only 176 pounds, the RR300 is poised to start off a new line of turbine helicopters, starting with Robinson's R66. Let's talk with Rolls-Royce's Chris Fultz to find out everything you need to know for the now about the Rolls-Royce RR300. Here to talk about the engine that dragged Frank Robinson kicking and screaming into the turbine age. The RR300 is going on the R66, a number of other aircraft as we understand. If you would, talk about the design decisions that culminated in your decision to go with the RR300. Well, the first, first requirement was an engine that could maximize performance in the 240 to 300 horsepower range. The existing Model 250 fleet smallest engine is about 420 horsepower, so we needed something we could scale down, uh, would be um, good performance, good SFC, but also meet that 240 to 300 horsepower kind of power range that we were looking for. We looked at uh, just doing a D-rate of a Model 250 engine, but we felt like we could do a better engine at cost, get better performance, and do a lot of other subtle improvements to the Model 250 line if we came out with something totally new. Um, that became the RR300. So this is not a scaled down engine then? This is a this clean sheet of paper? Um, not a totally clean sheet. We took the data and a lot of knowledge we had from Model 250. It's got a great legacy, a lot of good history and a lot of good learnings gone into that engine. We took with that, created a totally new compressor, made a lot of modifications to the gearbox and it made improvements. We had to do some modifications to the turbine because the air flows are different. And then we did some things to um, kind of help with the installation. We went to the single exhaust away from the twin duct. That simplifies the installation. We eliminated tack generators, uh, which drive the, the gauges in the cockpit. We've gone to electronic speed pickups, which is an enhancement. We also, uh, for Robinson, include what we call an installation kit that has torque meter and oil pressure transducers, uh, starter generators, part of the basic engine. And then we also have an engine monitoring unit that's part of the basic engine configuration. Basically, that monitors engine operation for 2,000 hours. So it's always recording data, engine speed, temperatures, torques, and pressures, so that you can get an idea when you go in for your first overhaul how the engine's been operated and what kind of, what kind of operational envelope it's seen. Aero TV is brought to you by... Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Because of the new compressor design and the new uh, changes we made in the turbine, we're able to push the TVO of the turbine up to 2,000 hours, which matches what Robinson plans for the R66 airframe. Well, obviously, for a company like Rolls-Royce, uh, it, but everything is known about, about turbines has to be known by you all at this point, but what kind of effort was it to start with uh, such a small engine in such a big company? Well, um, it was interesting because, the, you know, the company is used to very big products, but the, the group in Indianapolis really understands small gas turbines and you know we've been in this business since uh, you know late 50s early 60s so we've been through a lot through the entire process of designing the R300 we used not only knowledge and information in Indianapolis but uh, we have a, a gated review process that we use that we take uh, some people call them gray beards other very experienced reviewers and we go through our design as it progresses and we got input from all areas of the company on what best practices were, what things to consider, uh, risk analysis and then just a lot of uh, really good design activity. Now as we understand it, the uh, Schweitzer 434 is going to be utilizing this engine as well. Um, there's potential for that. I think they've announced 
announced that, and we're, we're still working with them on that installation as well as a couple other OEMs. Uh, any idea where else we might see the engine then? Um, we announced last year we had, had tentative you know, discussions with uh, Enstrom and Schweitzer and also with MD, and we're continuing to work with them and, and some other OEMs that we're not quite ready to, to talk about yet. What do you see the production ramp up to be like on this? When will you be in production with the engine and what's your initial production allotment? We obtained the FAA type certificate in December. We obtained our FAA production certificate in January of this year. Um, Rolls-Royce has implemented a brand new float, what we call flow line. It's called the SEAL Small Engine Assembly Line in Indianapolis. It is a tack time based assembly line where uh, the engine moves as components and modules down through a flow line. Um, made a significant investment in that line, a lot of new tooling, a lot of new procedures. Uh, the work instructions are all computer graphic based. Uh, there's smart tools involved. So we have set up, that, that line has capacity for a thousand engines a year. For, and it is a combined Model 250 and R300 line. It's also flexible so it can be expanded by adding more workstations, we can bump that up. Um, our, our initial launch order for Robinson was um, several hundred engines, and we're gearing up now. Uh, we've actually built the first production R300 engine. We expect to deliver it within the next few weeks. It is, um, when we do a brand new engine, we do um, additional testing. We'll, we'll build it once, it'll go through a full teardown inspection, um, full acceptance test. Then we take that engine completely apart, reinspect every part, look for anything that may have been missed initially, look for any uh, signs of distress from the test, and then that engine goes back together. We're in the process of putting that first engine back together now so that it can complete its final test to be delivered. Aero TV is brought to you by. Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly and fun to own. The jet for you. Any engine that goes out in the field is only as good as the maintenance that's going to back it up. Right. What are you looking at at this point as far as maintenance programs to support this power plant? We have um, implemented something we call a, a preventative maintenance inspection, the 2,000 hour maintenance. And that will be driven first by some life limited components, but also there's some components that historically we know what kind of life we can expect even though they may not have a, an FAA published life limit. So at that preventive maintenance inspection, our intent is that we'll look at some other parts. We may do some other inspections that you might not normally do on an engine that's just on condition. And our intent is to have a high likelihood that after that engine goes through a 2,000 hour event, it goes back in the aircraft and you've got a, in the 90% probability range of that engine going to the next 2,000 hours so that the operator doesn't get a surprise and have to pull an engine early trying to really drive on wing on wing time and, and eliminate the you know the, the burden and the hassle of having to pull an engine when you didn't plan to. And finally, might we see other derivations of this power plant? Absolutely. This engine is what we hope is the first of a family of new engines. Um, we're we're looking now at a growth version uh, potentially and, and working to get corporate approval to go forward with that. We think that'll be somewhere in the four fifty to five hundred horsepower range. Uh, we'll look very similar to this engine, but our plan when we launched the 300 was that it would be the first in a series of RR engines. So there you have it. This is the engine that finally convinced Frank Robinson to go turbine, which has to say an awful lot for Rolls-Royce. With the 250's uh, lineage and the history and the helicopter field before it, the RR300 is not quite a clean sheet of paper. It borrows heavily from what they've learned from the 250 line, but make no mistake about it, the RR300 is ready to stand on its own legs. For the Aero News Network and for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.